What's up everybody? This is Erzio99 and today we're going to be answering the other old question of new players everywhere. You've done the new player experience, you've done the career agents, heck maybe you've even gone to Arnon and done the Sisters of Eve at Vakark. The question becomes, where do we go from here? And unfortunately in in recent news, uh, there has been word of an alliance that has been exploiting new players and even coercing them to spend real money to buy Plex, to purchase skill injectors, to train into specific ships. Needless to say, this kind of, well, ass hattery is not tolerated even in the cutthroat environment of E. So, the CEO of that corporation is in for a big world of hurt. Now, the question then becomes, what happens to all the new players? So, I decided to make this video to help highlight and summarize some of the more prominent, newbie-friendly player corporations in the game to give folks a general bearing on where they can go. So, let's get started. Now, there are a few major organizations. And I'll highlight some of those here. Now, starting in HiSec, the first one we'll look at is Eve University. Now, Eve University is a very long standing, new player friendly. Corporation. It started in 2004, which is the year after the game was first released. Now, their admission process is a little difficult, but they have a very good training program. They also have, besides additional classes and operations in high security space, they also teach PvP with low sec and null sec campuses. So overall, it's a generally it's a good education. It's a lot more structured because they have specific classes and lectures and things of that sort. So if that's your if that's the way you learn or that's what you would be interested in, I definitely give Eve University a try. I've ne I didn't do Eve University, but I've heard nothing but good things about them. And hey, it promotes people staying in the game, which is what we should be emphasizing the most. Next, in high sec, we have two corporations that are a little bit interesting. RVB. Red versus blue. Uh, this is two groups, namely the Red Federation and the Blue Republic, that are based a few jumps away from each other that are in a state of constant war. The idea is that they declare mutual they've declared mutual war upon each other, so they can attack each other in high sec freely. Concord will not interfere. And they run fleets and fight and destroy each other. So it's a good way to learn PvP. And not really much else. They're very newbie friendly. They have bulk ship purchase programs. And so they, they take care of their members. And it's a good way to learn fleet combat in the relative safety of high security. 
They do have some rules regarding combat. I know that potting uh, players is discouraged. But other than that, I mean, it's a pretty much free fall. It's also very casual. Uh, join and drop as you may. Very good for very casual players if you don't have a lot of time to commit, but you still want to be able to, you know, get in there and make spaceship pixels blow up. These guys are probably the best match you're going to find. Now, other corporations are based in, tend to be based in null security, and those are, or can be more of a time commitment. But you're also going to see a lot of combat. Start with our first one here, Pandemic Horde. This is the very new player wing of the Pan Fam, the co basically the group of alliances led by Pandemic Legion, consisting of Pandemic Legion, which is the top tier guys, very high SP, tend to run around a lot of caps and supers, and you know, they tend to be a little more, how shall we say, elite as far as you know their their entrance requirements. New players are not going to get into the field. Then you have Pandemic Horde, which is very, very new player friendly. They also have a lot of higher skill point players, and sometimes folks from from Pandemic Legion will uh, link up with these guys and they'll go on fleets together and things like that. So they have a pretty good mentorship program, and I, you know, if you're if you're unaffiliated and you just want to. Go out there in the null sec. You know, these guys know what they're doing. They're backed by the very experienced players in PL. And they've probably got a portion of PL's money behind them. So, these guys are, they're alright. They're not gonna really dick you over. And if you like fleet combat, you know, these guys are good. They have null security uh, space out in, I believe, Fade. And they're all right. They're good folks. Uh, the other one, the other big one, if I can spell the name right, it's Karma Fleet. Now, goons generally get a bad reputation in EVE. You know, you know, then the Ministry of Love that I'm a member of is probably your good reason why. But overall, uh, new players that join Goonswarm through the proper channels get treated very well. And Karma Fleet is one of those corporations. Uh, this uh, was created around, this corporation was created around the same time as Pandemic Horde and Brave Newbies, which I'll get into in a moment. Historically, uh, goons have always been very receptive to new players. But for example, uh, in Goon Waffa, the original goon corporation from Something Awful, it was all, because the new players were all members of Something Awful, so they were treated very well. And they created this culture of respect and mentorship to new players. One of the, and of course, uh, of course you get access to, of course, all the resources of, you know, you get access to corporation resources, help, you get the backing of Goonsworm Federation and the Imperium, which is their coalition, is one of the most powerful entities in the game. They have a very good mentorship program, they have free frigates, that are just given out. We have uh, a lot of low SP and alpha character friendly doctrines that we use and we're deploying some of them even now that the goons are at war. As you can see I'm here here in Icon and then the Jackdaw. And we still deploy you know these newbie friendly doctrines 
you know, even even on this this big campaign where there's a lot of firepower being thrown around, we still have places and make room for movies. You can run around with jackdaws. Some of the very big fleets, like uh, hurricanes or typhoons, they may say, well, we'll get you into a jackdaw fleet. That's just because you can only have 256 members in a fleet, so every slot counts. So we'll try to get a jackdaw fleet together so that the new bros have something more, their, can fly something more their speed and still be a big help to the fleet. Whereas the FC for the Typhoons can focus on, you know, fight, playing with the big boys. Overall, it's a good corp. I mean, Good Swarm in general has always been good to newbies, but Karma Fleet is very good about its recruitment for new players. And as you can see, in the description, Karma Fleet is an open corporation. No one will ask you for is to join. No one will ask you to trade your assets to them in order to get you out to know. So, and they say that's one of the things they say be wary of recruitment scams. Karma Fleet has a no recruitment scam policy. But they will never ask you for is to join and they will never ask you to trade assets. In fact, they'll probably tell you to sell all your stuff in high sec before you join the corporation and then you'll they'll tell you how to get to where you need to be. So that's that's the long and short of that. And that's something to always be wary of is recruitment scams. Never pay S to join the corporation. If they're so interested in members there wouldn't be a fee. I'm not a scammer myself. I'm I despise scamming, especially recruitment scamming. Then we have our last major new, new war friendly corporation. We have uh, Brave Newbies Incorporated. Uh, run by Kagali Kagali. Historically, this corporation started as a guy just running around Losec. He got a bunch of people together, just ran around, gathered newbies, and slowly taught each other. They gained influence, and now they're a distinctly, they're one of the first distinctly uh, new player focused corporations that's cropped up in the past few years. Before, new player groups that existed were open. They liked new players, but they had a more narrow recruitment. Brave Newbies was the first open to anybody for recruitment corporation. They've uh, lived in low sec. They've moved into null sec. And I believe they're still in null sec currently. So, you can always get a few. These are always good guys to ask questions. And a lot of these corporations, even in their public channels, you can ask, you can ask, generally ask questions. You can usually get some pretty solid answers. So, when you run out of time in rookie help, which I've been in rookie help, and sometimes there's not a lot of help going on in rookie help. Should probably put in the right corporation. Next, uh, we'll cover Dreddit. This is the main corporation of Test Alliance. Please ignore. Uh, it's primarily, as you can imagine from the name, primarily focused around Reddit, whereas Goon Swarm is focused around something awful. The Corporation does have a very newbie rich history. In fact, their first encounter 
in wider Nullsec was with Goonswarm Federation as newbies. And Goonswarm kind of, at that time had been a fairly established and they kind of saw a test as a younger version of themselves and took them under the wing. But it's been a, after a few years, you know, things broke up. But test has still has a very solid culture for newbies. They were they were always kind of newbie focused since their beginnings, but that was uh, strongly reinforced, and they got a lot of organizational skills from goons and and for the training of new players. So they learned a, they learned a great deal from GSF while they were affiliated with GSF. So these guys are another good option if you want to get into the new players in with a, as a new player. Now there are also smaller corporations that may be new player friendly. There are, I'll give a few warning signs because I mean there are literally hundreds of thousands of corporations in EVE Online. The ones that I've I've showcased here, these you know, seven or eight, these are the biggest and most well known. There are some lesser known organizations that may cater to new players and but not in other but not in many ways. Um, a lot of these revolve around combat, especially the null set groups. When you live in null security, you have to be you have to have the means to defend your space. So it's not going to be all sunshine and roses. You're they're going to expect you to. You know, Get in a few fleets and learn how to blow up space pixels that aren't rats, that aren't pirates. You know they're gonna they're gonna not expect you to PVE all the time. You know when they're when someone lights their stuff on fire, they're gonna want you to be there to help put it out. But they're also not gonna just throw you to the sharks. They're gonna train you how to work as a group, why they use the ships that they do, how they work, things like that. So I would always look at, I would always uh, be open to that with the null set groups. It's not all going to be, you know, just shooting rocks and blowing up red crosses or red triangles. Eve University tends to be a little more lax in that they do train pilots in aspects of like science and industry. But they do have combat. They are almost always under a war deck. So there are very, there are precautions you have to take to avoid combat in an undesirable situation. And I know people may shy away from that, but there are important lessons to learn because in EVE, PvP can happen and the more you the more you gain the ability to ignore it, to avoid it when it's not favorable to you, the happier you're going to be in the long run. So, these are just a few of the organizations, things to look out for. Um, anytime anyone asks you to spend a lot of this to any kind of this to join, any person should not need us to make you, I mean, they know you're a new player. They know you've got no money. So why are they asking for ISK? The other thing is, uh, like the Karma Fleet uh, group said, anyone who says, oh yeah, we'll, we'll haul your stuff out to, to null security for you. Don't even bother. Just sell it in a trade hub. And then when they teach you how to get yourself there, you usually buy destroying your pod. You can buy or even just get handed stuff for free. Like in um, in Goons there's a channel for the newbies called GS Frigates. Where you, you literally join that channel 
tell them what you want, and they'll give you like a handful of those frigates. They just dole them out like candy. Because it's all low skill point stuff, it's all tech one stuff. And so we can, you know, if, one, if you have a blueprint for that, you can just crap it out like candy. Now the uh, other thing to look out for is anytime they say you have to buy, anytime you have to buy skill injectors or plex, a corporation should never, ever ask you to spend real money. The most that a corporation should ever require of a player in the money department. Is they can they say that you have to be an Omega character, like they they ask that you have a subscription to the game because you can't fly much as an Alpha character. You can fly your races frigates, your races destroyers, your races cruisers, and the Gnosis battle cruiser. That's it. There are so many things. Like I'll just give you a look at my at my skill tree, okay? And this is the Galente skill tree. As you can see, I don't ha I can't fly these because I don't have I don't have frigates to five, but I can fly a great deal of stuff on this character because he's a paid character. In fact, I. I have mastery level five on the obelisk. Okay, did not know that. So you're not going to get tons of stuff, you know, that you have access to. I mean, you like that, these, those, that, and that. Whereas I can fly all this other stuff up here. So the, they should never ask you to pay real money for anything, especially skill injectors. The new player corp is going to realize that you train at this, you know, you have these skills, you train at this rate, and they're going to provide you skill plans to guide you along to load your skill queue, to train skills that are going to be useful to you so you're not all spastic and wasting a lot of time in frivolous things that in the long run you may wish you didn't have trained anyway. So they're going to have focused skill plans to help you along. And they're not going to be hypercritical about you making mistakes. I mean, we had, I've, I've seen fleets in GSF. We were out doing a thing, and a new player is like, "Can I join? I'm in this." And he's like, they're "Like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're not too far away. Come on, come on." And he told us where we were at. And he starts flying. He flew through an incursion system, which in Nullsec is kind of dangerous because, unlike High Sec, you know, you get the green glow and you get the weird audio, and that's really it. In Nullsec. In low sec, the incursion ships can show up at the gate, and those things can really mess you up. So this this fella he autopiloted, so of course he landed 15 kilometers from the gate he was going through, and of course there were incursion rats on the gate. So of course they promptly blew him up. So of course he says in in the mumble, he's like, "Well, I di oh, I died." He's, he's like, "In the it was a uh, big red boat." And he's like, "A little newbie died." Okay, what'd you die to? And he, he links the lost mail, and we found out he was autopiloting at the gate, and we all kind of chuckled. We weren't laughing out of malice; we thought it was hilarious because he, I mean, he's just a new player; he doesn't know any better. So. Uh, the big red boat just links his name in um, the fleet and says, everyone just shower this dude in this. 
and every one of us sent him like 10, 20, 30 million esque. And it doesn't, it sounds like a lot to a new player, just 30 million. But this was in a fleet of 256 people. So that, that kid got quick, rich, quick. That's the kind of attitude you want in a new player corporation. You know, they know you're going to make mistakes. They're going to laugh with you. Because, I mean, it's just a little frigate. He's not like he's losing anything spectacular. You know? So the minute he gets home and asks for it, he'll have five more waiting in his hangar. It's no big deal. Plus, he's now like a, some, a few billion is richer from all the people who've been giving him money because he made him laugh. So he's making out. I mean, he's, he's in a good place. That's the kind of, and that's, that's the kind of place we, we want in New Eden. Because, yeah, some people will say, yeah, we want new players because they're competition, which is true. That's the cycle of life and death in this game. You're gonna lose stuff. That's fine. I lost one of these jackdaws yesterday, but you know what? I filed SRP. I got the money back. I got insurance on the thing. You know, I spend a few, a few million isk of my own money and I'm right back at it. You know, a 225 million isk ship fully fit that I bought here. I paid 50, 60 million isk. That's a pretty easy disc to get, and I don't lose these very often. The last one I had, I had for over six months. So they're not, and they're very hard to, they're very hard to lose if you know what you're doing. But you'll, that's why you start in the small ships. You lose them, it's like a few million esque. It's like, so what? I mean, heck, since we're in the staging system, let's look up some of the ships that we like to use. Yeah. Five million esque. Gets you a, a little newbie ship. And once you insure it, you'll probably get most of that back. And with SRP, yeah, these you get these like candy. And that's totally fine. And if you ask in your corporation, you could probably just get these for free if you're in if you're in Karma for you. So that's New Player Corporations in a nutshell. If you have any more questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. You can also reach me on Twitter at Urzio99. But that's it for this episode. I'm Urzio99, and I'll see you next time.